हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज डॉक्टर पवन जगन्नाथ तांबड़े वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन केमिस्ट्री एट मराठा विद्या प्रसारक समाज नाशिक टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ माय टॉक इज एरोनोटेशंस इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री डियर फ्रेंड्स साइंस मेक्स यूज ऑफ वेराइटी ऑफ सिम्बॉल टू कम्युनिकेट इफेक्टिवली Normally, you encounter some symbols like alpha, beta, gamma, some signs like positive, negative, and many more symbols are used. In case of organic chemistry, the most common symbol which one encounter is arrow notation. In case of any reference book of organic chemistry or research literature, you will find some arrow notations. in those materials in today's video lecture we will see what those arrow notations tells us so the different arrow notation which use in organic chemistry are the first one is the forward arrow which we encounter normally in any book of organic chemistry the second arrow notation is equilibrium arrow the third one is resonance arrow the next arrow notation which we encounter seldomly in textbook is dash arrow then the next one is curved arrow which is double headed sixth one is single headed curved arrow then we will encounter this broken arrow in some research article or reference books and last but not the least which is very common nowadays is retrosynthesis arrow so all these arrow notations are used by organic chemist to communicate properly with the readers one by one we will see what are the important features of this arrow notation which are explored by organic chemist to communicate with the readers so let's start the first arrow notation is forward arrow forward arrow is used to show the action for example in this case this material that is benzene is converted into acetophenone and this is shown by this forward arrow this forward arrow is also used to notify the reagent and condition which are being carried out to convert this material into this material this is very common in organic chemistry the second arrow notation which we encounter in our organic chemistry books is equilibrium arrow equilibrium arrow shows reversible processes for example in this case when acetic acid is added in water it dissociates to form a conjugate base and h3o positive ion and at equilibrium concentration of this reactant and product are say constant which is shown by this equilibrium arrow at the same time in reference books you will encounter a different types of equilibrium arrow where length of one arrow is shorter and other arrow is longer which try to tell us something in that for example if you look at this reaction then in this case this material is converted into this material which is shown by this equilibrium arrow and this equilibrium arrow shows that tell us that concentration of this stuff is more at the time of equilibrium as concerned as compared to concentration of this material so the next arrow notation which we use is resonance arrow resonance arrow is shown by double headed point at both the end of arrow and this resonance arrow is used to show interconvergence between resonating forms for example this anion by means of phenomenon of resonance can be converted into this and in this two structure the only difference is in position of electron and it is shown by this resonating structures the next arrow which is uncommon is dash arrow and this dash arrow is used to show theoretical steps which we need to convert one of the chemical into another chemical for example if i want to convert this material x into this material y then what kind of condition i need 
that condition can be shown with the help of this dash arrow so in such cases dash arrow is used the next is curve arrow double headed or we normally call it as double headed curve arrow this double headed curve arrow is used to show movement of electron pair for example in this example in case of anisole this electron pair which is present on oxygen is moving from oxygen to aromatic system so this movement of electron pair is shown by this double headed curve arrow in case of organic reaction mechanism in ionic mechanism normally we use this double headed curve arrow for showing movement of electron from nucleophilic species to electrophilic and so on the next arrow is curve arrow single headed this single headed curve arrow is used in free radical mechanisms for example in this particular reaction this material on heating is converted into this free radical during formation of this free radical this single bond between oxygen and oxygen breaks homolytically so that each oxygen will take its one electron back so this movement of single electron towards an atom or group is shown by single headed curve arrow and as i told earlier this normally we encounter in free radical reactions or in case of homolytic fusions the next arrow notation which is used is broken arrow now this broken arrow is used to show some unsuccessful reaction for example if suppose i try to convert this cyclohexyl bromide into this compound and i fail to achieve this transform transformation then such a reaction is shown with the help of broken arrow that is this arrow is used to show unsuccessful reactions then last but not the least is retrosynthesis arrow this retrosynthesis arrow that is the open arrow is used to show the path via which a particular target molecule can be achieved for example if suppose i want to make this molecule then theoretically i will think how i can make this molecule and then i will come to some conclusion that this molecule can be obtained from this starting material then in order to show this retrosynthetic theoretical path we will use this retrosynthesis arrow so these are the different arrow notation which normally we encounter in our organic chemistry reference book or research article i hope you learn something new in this video lecture thank you for watching my video thanks a lot